Model steam engines, top tip time, part 25. The clips in this video are extracts from a video series I made a while back about rebuilding a Bassett Lowe steam plant. And the whole plant was in terrible condition. Now it's starting to look altogether better and it's time to mount the boiler and the components on the baseboard. But I'm not mounting the components directly onto the baseboard, I'm mounting them on a piece of 3mm thick mild steel plate, which provides a lot of rigidity for mounting the components. As usual, there are quite a lot of good tips in this episode. The time has come to make a decision where all the parts are going to fit on this new baseboard. I'm adding a hand pump, and I think the safest place for that is behind the generator, it's away from anything hot. I'm changing the position of the assembly very frequently, and I'm not doing this for the video, I'm doing it for my benefit. By taking a look at the plant from many different angles, it becomes apparent which is the best way to lay it out. For instance, I figured out that the rear mounting lugs need to be very close to the end of the piece of metal. Some people watching this video may think, why am I going to so much trouble to mount the components on this piece of steel on the piece of wood? Why not just paint the piece of wood after filling the holes and use small wood screws to secure everything to the piece of wood? A very simple fix. But that would be very poor. I never like to mount steam engine components to pieces of wood because wood expands and contracts with the heat and it moves about and it's just not good. This is the way to do it. Make sure you have a really solid mounting base for the components. In this clip I'm using my right angle scriber to scribe the position of the mounting holes for the boiler. And before I receive any expert comments, don't bother, I am aware of transfer punches, but I don't want to use them because bashing them with a hammer really close to the boiler is not a good idea. I don't want to have to repaint it again. For jobs like this I don't really need to cover the piece of steel in marking out blue. All I need to do is scratch a position for each of the mounting holes, Mark crosses on the piece of metal corresponding to each of the holes, then using a sharpie felt tip pen, put a spot where I want the hole to be. And this makes it a very easy job to accurately spot the holes using a centre drill. I'm using a centre drill because a normal drill would wander all over the place. But once I centre drilled the holes, I did go through with a tapping size drill for 5BA. A word of caution, most of the mild steel that I buy from Blackgate's Engineering is free cutting mild steel, it cuts really beautifully. This piece of sheet metal that I also bought from Blackgate's doesn't cut too well, so it was bad enough drilling it and now I'm having to tap it with a 5BA tap and being extremely careful not to break the tap off in the hole. This was quite nerve wracking and it gets worse. The boiler mounting bolts are all 5BA, but the rest of the mounting bolts for the engine, the hand pump and the small generator are going to be 6BA. I'm marking out the positions to drill some 3 16 holes and these will be used to secure the steel baseboard to the wooden baseboard. Now that part of the job's done, using some Scotch-Brite I'm removing the felt tip pen marks. Although I don't need to do this, it just makes it look better for the video. This part of the job takes a bit of care. I'm using a 3 16 of an inch diameter drill bit through the holes just to put a mark in the baseboard underneath and I change it to a suitable pilot drill for the wood screws that I'm going to use. But when using the 3 16 of an inch diameter twist drill, be careful it doesn't grab and pull it all the way through. If this was to happen, you would have to plug the hole, then re-drill. In this clip, I'm screwing the steel baseboard down onto the wooden baseboard using this type of screw. And once the steel baseboard is fixed to the wooden baseboard, the next thing to do is to just make sure I haven't made a mistake and that the boiler lug holes line up with the ones in the metal. And as you can see, I've temporarily put some brass bolts in, and they do indeed. In any case, I want the boiler in its final position, so I can figure out the best place to put the engine. And I've figured out the best place to put the engine, so once again, with the right angle scriber, I'm going through the holes to make a scratch mark on the steel. And I'm being very careful to hold the engine very firmly in place. The felt tip pen mark just makes it easy to see. In this clip, this is after I drilled all the holes, tapping size for 6BA. And after drilling the holes in the steel, I went all the way through into the wood as well. So once I've tapped the steel, the bolt will go through the steel into the wood where it will cut its own thread. And it will just help to stop the bolts from working loose. To continue the job, I removed the four wood screws so I could lift the steel plate off the top of the wood. I then deburred all of the holes. 
In order to get a good key for the paint on this very shiny piece of mild steel, I'm using my small orbital sander with an 80 grit pad attached. And what this does is it scratches the surface all over. I'm going to do it both sides because I'm going to paint the underside first, just so it doesn't go rusty if it gets any water trap between the baseboard and the metal plate. This job took a lot longer than I'm showing on the video, but in the end I got a very evenly scratched piece of steel. This is a painting jig that I made a while ago. All it is is a piece of 6mm plywood with four panel pins hammered into it and you can see what it does. It supports things that I'm going to paint. Talking about paint, this is the paint I'm going to use. It's self-etched primer, it's grey and I get it from Alter Paint Northern. The address is on the can. I'm painting the underside first, I'm giving it several light coats. So I get a nice even coverage. It's a very warm day so you can actually see the paint drying. Once I'd finished painting the underside, I turned the part over and sat the painted side on the four pins. And yes, the heads of the four small panel pins are going to make a mark in the paint, but that's on the underside. This is the side I'm more concerned with, the visible one. And that's about it for this episode. This is the top surface drying. And it's drying very quickly because it's a warm day. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.